Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on lead code regarding bank account summary and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is medium and this question has been asked in off-term interviews over the past couple of years. Okay, let's jump right in. We are given a table called users with three different columns, user ID, username, credit. User ID is the primary key for this table. Each row of this table contains the current credit information for each user. Okay. We are also given a second table called transaction with five different columns, transaction ID, paid by, paid to, amount and transacted on. Transaction ID or trans ID is the primary key for this table. Each row of this table contains information about the transaction in the bank. User with ID paid by transfers the money to user with ID paid to. Lead code bank LCB helps its coders in making virtual payments. Our bank records all transactions in the table transaction, right? So this is the table which has all the records. We want to find out the current balance of all users and check whether they have breached their credit limit. That is if their current credit is less than zero. We are asked to write a SQL query to report the user ID, user name, the credit that is the current balance after performing transactions and a column called credit limit breached with yes or no val values, right? The order of the result does not matter, right? So basically what we have is we have one table called users, which has information about their IDs, their names and the current credit. Now they perform a series of transactions and at the end of all those transactions, what are their basically the current balance and whether it is less than zero or not, right? So let's go through this example, right? So you have four different users, right? Mustafa, John, Thun, Winston, Louis, and these are the transactions table, right? So these are transaction ID one, two, and three, three different transactions paid by paid to the amount, right? So we want that for each of the user ID at the end of all these transactions, what is the uh, remaining credit, right? So if you look at it, right? So Mustafa started with hundred units. Let's say all this is in dollars, right? So hundred dollars. So now then uh, Mustafa paid to, you know, user ID three, that is Winston $400. So out of hundred, he, he paid $400, right? So right now the balance is minus 300. Then he received $200 from Jonathan, right? So minus 300 plus 200 that is minus 100 so obviously the current balance is minus 100 and obviously since this is less than zero so credit limit breached yes similarly you can do for you know uh, jonathan winston lewis etc so if in the output you see mustafa minus 100 and credit limit breached yes now let's take for lewis right so lewis if you look at it lewis started with 800 dollars and there is no transactions right so in the output, you have Lewis and same credit that it started with and no, right? So that is what we need to do. So since as we saw that if we start from the transactions table, right, it is possible that some of the users don't do anything, right? So if you, you know, start with transactions and join the users table, then it might be a problem for users like Lewis. So to keep all the users, we should join this on this right so what i'm saying is from this table called users right so from this table called users alias as you you let's left to join the table called transactions right transactions alias as t on right on now the user id from the users table can be either in the paid by column or the paid to column right so it can be u dot user id equal to t dot paid by or u dot user id equal to t dot paid to right so we write u dot user id is equal to t dot paid by or u dot user id is equal to t dot paid to right so what will this do? So it will start. Okay. One. Yes, it is equal to, so it will append all these, right? Then it will go here. Okay. None of them are there. Then here it will say, okay, not in paid by, but in paid to, right? So there will be a second row again as well, right? For user ID one, similarly for two, three. And since for four, it will say, okay, there is nothing. So it will be having null in all the, on the values of these columns, right? From the transactions table. So once you have this, then what do we need to do is for each of the users, right? You need to find out the 
amount that they transacted right so what we can do is we can write group by we need to keep all the users right so if you group by any of these two columns it is possible that people like louis right so because if in people like louis right so they, if there are no transactions these columns are going to be null right for for louis so you should not group by paid by or paid to you should group by the user id because even if the transactions are not present it, this is still going to have the value right so group by u dot user id right and then we need to return right so we need to return u dot user id right and now what we need to do so we saw that so like let's take example of user id equal to one right so one it will go and do a join right okay so user id is equal to paid by right so all these values will be populated so in this case it is paid by that particular user id right so obviously you can use case when statements and say that wherever your user id is equal to paid by right so your money is going away from that user so you need to multiply this amount by minus one and if the person is is or the user is receiving that then the money is coming to the person right so the amount should be positive right so what we can do is we can write case when right case when u dot user id is equal to t dot paid by then what it should be minus one multiplied by the amount because the money is going away from the user right else it should be amount because else what is the condition that is left user is getting the money right so else amount and since you started a case when statement you need to end it right and once you have these right minus or pluses then you need to sum it up right so that for each of the user you can find out that at the end of all these transactions how much money they are left with or they owe right so let me, you know, just uh, write some and let's alias this as something, right? Uh, remaining, right? So let's write it rem, rem, right? Let me run this. Let's see what we are getting. So here, if you look at it, right? So what do we have? We have for user ID one minus 200, two, 300, three minus 100 and four this much, right? So these are the values after transactions. We still have to take in account this credit, right? Because they did not start from zero. They started with certain values, right? This is just after all these transactions, what is the remaining amount? right for all these different users and we see that for user id4 since there is no you know transactions so here it is null now to take into account these credits so after you group by the users right so after each of the users right so we said that okay group by the user return the user and sum of you know all these case, cases right now once you have that then if you just go ahead and add this credit right so basically right now this is starting from zero but obviously they started from something right so if you add the values right so if i write plus you know so calculate the sum of each of the users of all these transactions and then if i write u dot credit right if i write u dot credit and let's like you know rename this to like whatever total or does not matter you can keep it ram like it does not matter uh, so if i run this right now if you look at it so now if you see right in the output you have you started with certain things and after all the transactions user id 1 is left with minus 100 user id 2 is left with 500 user id 3 is 9900 if you see user id 4 they did not do anything right there was no transaction but they started with 800 but however if you perform a sum of you know a null value and a like a value right actually it is returning you a null right so how can you take care of this because in the output you should have 800 not null right so you can use the if null function that if your sum is coming out to be null replace it with zero and then when you add that zero to the credit it is going to be the credit itself right so what i'm saying is if null we can use if null right so if this entire sum comes out to be null then you replace it by zero and then you add the credit right so if i run this now then let's see what we are getting so now you have 
these values right so you have the user id credit and if you look at here right so user ids and all the values are correct now all you need is the user name and the column credit limit breached right so what we can do is we can save this in a common table expression so we can write with cte as and this entire thing goes into parentheses right so this and goes into parentheses and now from the table called right what we can do is we can you know join this you know common table expression with the users table because users table has the username right so what we can do is we can write from users right like alias as you let's left join users alias as you right let's left join the common table expression alias as c right on on u dot user id is equal to c dot user id right and then what all do we need to keep we need to keep the user id right so u dot user id you need to keep the user name so u dot user name you need to keep the credit as well right however if you look at it the credit is not this column right it is after all the transactions that were done what is the remaining credit right so basically this is this column so we write c dot total alias as credit so don't get confused that it says okay you need to return credit so you don't need to return this column you need to return after all the transactions what is the remaining balance right and then we need to make a fourth column called credit limit braced and then what do we need to write case when c dot total is greater than zero then no else yes right so basically a column called credit limit breach so we can alias this as since we started a case when statement we need to write end and then alias as credit limit breached right so let me copy this here paste it here right so as credit limit breached now do we need to okay so we do not need to order this as well right let me run this let's see what we are getting okay so this is accepted our output is same as expected output right so if you look at it it's exactly the same now let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yeah it passes all the test cases and this is how we do it again yes it is somewhat tricky but all you need to do is you know for each of the users you need to find out right what are the different transactions made and then group by the user ids make sure that when you know the person is giving away the money then you need to encounter that amount as negative and when the person is receiving the money you need to account account that for positive money right and then once you have figured out all of that then you basically add the initial credit so that after all the transactions what is the balance remaining right and then once we had that then all we did was you know made the fourth column called credit limit breezed to make sure that if the total balance remaining after all these transactions is less than zero then yes it has been breezed if not then no the limit has not been breezed so yeah, this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way you can think of to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video